Friends, my name is Christy Rice, and I just came home from a three-week trip in Europe. Uh, we covered six countries, but technically five. We just drove through Luxembourg. And every time I was in a new country, I was like, where are the art stores? And so that kind of mentality led to some shopping. And so I'm gonna share with you some of the supplies, all of the supplies that I picked up and uh, paint with them and talk about them and answer questions. So yeah, this is gonna be good. Now I will give you fair warning. Some of these supplies you can get in the US. It's just, I wasn't really aware of them. So it's gonna be a fun adventure and I really hope you stick around. Let's get to it. All right, I'm just gonna start opening stuff and see if that leads me to some sort of chronological space with all this. Now I will, we started our trip in, um, we started our trip in Amsterdam. And so one of the first things we did is we headed to the Van Gogh Museum and um, the Rijksmuseum. That was like our first non jet lag day. I did our very first day that we arrived where I was so jet lagged. Um, I went to, what is it, Van, Van Beek, that really old art supply place there. Um, I'm gonna put this to the side, but anyway, I just want to talk about these little pouches because these are from the Van Gogh Museum. These are so cute, and so what this is, to the best of my understanding, it was a fifth. Was it a 50-year celebration of the Van Gogh Museum? Anyway, it was an anniversary art piece that the the museum had created, and you what you can see is that it combined different elements: Van Gogh sunflowers. I think these were the almond blossoms, his irises, different um, floral bits from his paintings and made these like hybrid, this hybrid pattern. I am so in love with it. So in love. Isn't it gorgeous? So anyway, it was just something I bought in the gift shop, but I immediately put it to use. I used these pouches all throughout the trip. They're like a nylon water resistant, very stain resistant. So anywho, and friends today, I'm also going to reveal some revelations. I am going to reveal some revelations about supplies that I own, supplies that I designed, because this trip definitely opened my eyes to some things that I want to do differently moving forward when I travel. And it's actually inspired some new, um, some new art, Art, some new supplies that I want to develop. All right, so this was the sketchbook I used most. This is the Hana Mule toned watercolor paper. Now I will say this, friends, this is not 100% cotton. It was not my favorite to work on. However, because the sketches that I was doing were really quick, I'm just gonna give you like a glance at these except that one wasn't quick, but most of these sketches were quick and I wasn't doing a lot of layering. This is a great example. It worked. And I just felt like the toned vibe was super awesome and made sense for the trip. So um, I would recommend this and I would use this again. Um, I probably just wouldn't, um, it definitely wouldn't be the only thing I brought with me. And then I had my other sketchbook. Where did I put it? I don't know. It's down on the floor. I'm not going to show it today, but it was my Blue Lotus sketchbook. Um, and it was filled with Fabriano Artistico, you know, bright white, you know, the bomb.com. Um, and then I, I picked up some watercolor paper at Van Beek that I used for two of my kind of larger expanded paintings. All right, let's get into it. Now this, the stuff that's in this pouch, oh yeah, and look at this. This is the other side. So they did a bouquet. They did a bouquet. Look at this, I'm trying to get the wrinkles out. So gorgeous. Ah, I wanna try to get these in my shop. I do, because I just think y'all would love them. All right, so I'm gonna put this down here because that was just full of the supplies that I packed to take with me. All right, so in here, these are the supplies that I ended up, I know, I ended up just putting these away in my suitcase. I realized, I kind of figured out what I was using most. Um, so I didn't use these Kareen markers. Um, I bought the Stabilo uh, Woody uh, pencils, the water solubles. 
This ended up being my hero, the white one. I'll talk about that more later. But the other colors I didn't use as much, although I am excited they're sending me a set. Um, and I'm excited to give those a try. I, I got a new needed eraser somewhere. And I, you know, I knew that I, I didn't get it for the trip. So that ended up coming over. I did not use the Ranger, um, these bad boys. What are these called? The Woodless Watercolor Distress Watercolor Pencils. Yeah, I didn't use those. And I did, I got these pencils. Oh my gosh. I got these at, where did I get these? Van Beek. Van Beek right in the Amsterdam. It's been around since like 18 something or other. Um, Karen Dash, uh, they're just wood, wood pencils. They've got like exotic wood outers, but I only used one of them. This one, as you can see, I used it quite a bit, but aren't these pretty? And there's a blue one somewhere. Here's the blue one. So Karen Dash, and they had different sets, but these I just thought were so gorgeous. Such a pretty exotic wood. <clears throat> Hello, 13 Main Street, first lives. So glad you're here. So glad. Woohoo. Friends, remember, if you're here and you have questions, put three question marks in front of your questions. Uh, okay, so that pencils from Van, Van Beek, I just used one of them. going to keep that over there. This little guy, Wax Aquarel from Koi, Koi Noor, um, I didn't play around with that yet, and I can't even remember where I got it. Uh, but it, gosh, it looks fun. Let me grab some paper. I don't know, did I even, I think I just grabbed it. I think I got this from Van Beek as well. Ah! That just broke right off. Well, that's a bummer, but let's get it going here and see what it does. And spray, spray, spray. I need to talk about this bottle at some point. It's a very important point. Revelation that I had. Very similar. Let's see. Let's compare this to the Woody from Stabilo. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Y'all know how I pronounce things. Mm, the Stabilo is better. The Stabilo, like really washes out better. I really like these woodies. I do. So there's that and that. So yeah, these were the things that I put away and just didn't end up using. I didn't love the Sharpie pen that I brought with me. I know I talked about it in the video before I left. Was not my favorite tip. It wasn't springy enough. I couldn't get a fine enough point. It's not that I won't ever use it. Um, I will, but it just wasn't my fave. There's those Kareen. Um, didn't use my watercolor marker either. So those were in that pile. I did use my white gouache until something else came into my possession. I'll talk more about that later. Um, and then these Stabilo pencils, I did use one of these. I got three of them. They're for right and left handers. Did not even realize they made that, but I guess the grips are angled differently. So cool. Very cool, very cool. I got a new brand. I was not aware of this brand, Bukaru, and they had a 4H, and I wanted and a 2H, and I got a 4B, I think, and a 2B, or no, an HB. I used their 2H, and I really liked it because it was much more intense and soft than a traditional 2h that i'm used to but somewhere like in the middle i don't know where that ended up there's another woody didn't use that color these are my extra little nibs for this um this pen i used this one this was that pen that i talked about that had all the different nibs blue ink i put in it and then you could change out the nibs I use this quite a bit. I was pleased with it, but again, I really wished I would have got the other end. All right, eraser. I used another eraser. Okay, so that's that's that. Lots of paper towels. We'll put those to the side because I will use those. I will use those for sure. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, okay, so for those of you that watched, um, no, let's back up. 
I finally grabbed at Van Beek. I finally grabbed Rembrandt watercolors. Finally, um, because I just I never had them. It's not like I can't get them at home, but I'm like, you know what? I'm here. They're light. They're not liquid. I'm going for it, and it was an experience, and it was fun. Um, and that store is so cute. Um, you know, nothing special in terms of like visuals. I thought it would have been a little like more wow factor because it's so old. I mean, it's got wood floors, but you know, there's maybe it's just that there's just so many modern supplies in there that, you know, it can only look so, so old with all those modern supplies in there. Let's, this is one that I was really curious about. Oh, they've got the nice little, just tear it. Okay. So I thought this might be like an interference type color and that's what it is. Just make sure all that, I'm going to leave that on. But yeah, picked up some Rembrandts. Uh, do I have any black watercolor paper? I don't. So let's open up another one. Oh, geez, that popped out easy. Oh, this is an old packaging I have to unwrap. Love the new packaging that, that the paint companies are doing with those like pull tabs. So much better. All right. <clears throat> Anybody tried Rembrandt? What do we think? What do we know? Tell me all about it. Yeah, it re-wets really nicely, which we would expect. Moving and grooving. So there's, I would think there's ox gall in here, but I don't. I really don't know. My water's dirty, so. But look at how opaque we can get that. Very nice. That's just a first little foray with these. Yeah, see how dirty my water is? Eh. Yes, this is still live. You betcha. I've watched you for a couple of years, and finally I catch you live. Oh, my gosh, Penny, that's awesome. Don't forget to boop. Yes, please go ahead and boop. If you're here, you're enjoying yourself, that's uh, that's the thumbs up or the, what, yeah, it's a thumbs up, right? Go ahead and boop the video. It um, really helps my channel, helps others find this channel. Uh, all right, so there's the Rembrandts that I picked up. I've got, oh, what do I got here? I feel like I should just undo these and get them into a palette while I'm at it. But I don't know where my palettes are. Go figure. You're like, how do you not know where your palettes are? My empties, that is. I think I used all my empties recently. Anywho, I'm going to put those up here. But I'm looking forward to painting with those more in depth. I did not unearth them on the trip. It was just so much mentally. I was like, oh, that's for home. That's a home situation, right? Oh, another thing I did not use, and I actually did not love, but maybe I just need more time with them, were these Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I do not like the way they drag on the paper at all. They feel like wax. And then, like, look how they don't. They don't easily release the color compared to how these two did. Now, actually, look at that. I was originally saying that the woodies release the color better, but they actually left the line behind way more than this wax crayon I was using. It's calling it a wax watercolor. Yeah, wax aquarelle. I just, I don't like at all how these Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, um, how they drag on the page. They just feel ick. Ick. So they went back into my suitcase pretty early on. Hello, hello. Thank you, Terry, for the boop. Remember, if you have questions, just put a couple question marks in front of those questions. That would be so helpful. I'm going to put these, got a little bit of something on the side here. I'm going to put away for a little bit later on. There's a reason behind that. What else do I have? Oh, here's the 2H pencil from Bukaru that I ended up re really liking the feel of it. Right? It just, I mean, look at that. It's way more, 
soft than a traditional 2H, but it's it's almost like an HB.2, if that even makes sense. Do you know what I mean? It it has an HB vibe. But it's like a little bit lighter than an HB, which is kind of cool because my favorite pencil is typically an HB. So really like, like the Bukuru, um 2H. Uh, Biscoff. Yeah, I have a Biscoff. I also have a candy bar in here. Some weird Nestle Lions. That's guys. Anywho, I digress. What else is in here? Mm. Diapers. Nobody needs that. Okay. So I got some watercolor paper at Van Beek. Is this one of them? Nope. This goes in this pile. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, we should talk about this. Yeesh. My son got me this at Kukanoff. He got me the little the little pen with the tulip on it, sweetheart. Gosh, he's so cute. He really enjoyed buying presents for people while we were over there. It was really cute. He was collecting everybody's leftover euros and buying presents for everyone. All right. I need to find the watercolor paper that I picked up. Here we go. Ooh. Sorry, got books. All right, this was one of the watercolor papers I grabbed. This was like a Van Beek watercolor paper. Yeah, so that's cool. That, what, ah! Well, that's gonna certainly keep happening. So I liked this watercolor paper a lot. Just give you a peek. These are the two paintings I'm probably gonna um, try to finish next week. So this was a painting I, we spent two days in Rotenburg, de, 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 de Tauber, I don't know how to pronounce it, that one, um, the walled city. And then this was a painting I started at Kukanoff and I didn't get very far um, because I also was doing other things at Kukanoff. And then, then I got wind of the paint mill powered by a windmill late in the day and I'm like, oh hell. I got to get my butt there, but I, I did this in Kukanoff and I didn't paint it yet. So I didn't get very far on this, but I really love it. So I'm going to next week, I'm going to be printing out photos from Kukanoff and finish that. And I got a long way on this one. Um, so, but anywho, the paper, um, it's somewhere between a cold press and a hot press. And it just accepts the, the, the paint really beautifully you get interesting things that happen easily, but they don't get weird easily, if that makes sense. Uh, so, so yeah, I really enjoyed the Van Beek paper. Have no idea about getting it locally or, you know, in the US. So there's that. So I did finally, now I have used Van Gogh paints before. I get so many comments on my review videos. They're like, what about Van Gogh paints? I'm like, I know, I know I've used them, but just select tubes I've had. So I finally, you know, I'm at the Van Gogh museum and I'm like, well, ooh, this one got stuck. I'm like, how appropriate. Not that this was, I mean, it was specially packaged for the Van Gogh museum, which was cute. But, you know, it's not like, I don't think it's specially curated. So I just, I finally got myself a full-blown set of, you know, a smaller set of Van Goghs, painted with those for a couple of days. And I enjoyed them. They're, they're fantastic for being considered student grade. Um, and I actually really love the palette. <laughs> it's just cute and orange and, yeah. So, love that. And actually, in my sketchbook, I kept part of the packaging from, I hope I did. Oh no, where did it go? Did it fall out? I was using it as a, as a straight edge for like a long time. See, like my kids drew this. They had, oh, here it is. So my kids drew this for me when we were at this church. They had a little table out at the church for kids to draw at. Um, no, this isn't it. I, I bet you it fell out. No, no, no. I see it. Okay. This was the packaging that was on the Van Gogh palette. And so I kept it. 
and I wonder if I can fit it in here. No, I'll just keep it in the sketchbook. But it was like when I needed a little straight edge, it's what I used the whole time. And while I'm here, let me show you. My son and daughter started collecting me um, plants and whatnot. I lost a lot of them along the way, but I was able to keep these three. It was so cute. So I'll keep that all safely tucked in here. Memories. Yeah. Like the corner of my mind. Okay. That was flat. Okay. So let me get this all secured. Anyway, where was I going with that? Oh, I wanted to show you the branding, the packaging for that palette. It was super cute. Um, all right. What else we got in here? Oh, there is just a mess of things in here, y'all. Just a mess. So hold, hold on to, hold on. Just oh, I want to show you before we go there. So y'all know I design my own brushes, but I have been doing research on building my own mop brush. Um, and so I picked up this Escoda Ultimo Evolution. And she is a beaut, Clark. I mean, she is a beaut. So uh, really excited to get my hands on that. But I actually, so one thing I wish about this is that it came to a finer point, right? That it came to a finer point. Um, and this one is made to feel like, see how you'd have to reshape that? This one, I believe, is synthetic, but it's kind of made to feel like squirrel hair. So I bought this for research. I want I want a mop brush you don't have to reshape as much. And that will come to a finer point, but still have this big belly. So anyway, I picked up this beauty. Look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? This was at Van Beek as well. All right. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I know it's a gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I love a mop brush too. So it's time. It's coming friends. Don't worry. It's a coming, but it needs to, you know, it needs to be a mop brush that works with my brain and then hopefully it'll work with yours. All right. So moving on, this was in, um, Lynn's Lynn. I think this was in Lynn's. No, where was that little Stabilo shop? But it was like a little craft shop that I ended up in that had a lot of markers. Let's see. There's more of these pencils. Um, I got HB. Did I get all HBs? I did just different colors. So I'll put those there. So this little shop was sweet. It had everything. It didn't have a lot of watercolors. I had Lucas and I felt bad because I think the Lucas, um, rep was there when I was there. Cause he was there like taking inventory with one of their employees and I'm thinking, oh dude, don't ask me. Like, don't notice me. Cause I was there for like two hours. Don't notice me. Don't ask me what I think of your paints. Cause is it, it's not going to go well. Um, and he didn't, thank goodness. <laughs> not to be snotty, but I'm just not a fan of the new, of the new formulation. I think they switched manufacturers or something, but that's in another video. So I picked up these, which I don't think I'd seen before. Um, what are they called? Pen 68 Stabilo. They're water soluble. So it's got that felt tip, but it's more flexible, which, which makes me happier. So I can get some fine lines, not as, not as whimsical as I would like. And I don't get as graceful of a shift in line quality with these, but they're, they're nice. I am not shaking my fist at them. And then look at how they release pigment. I mean, look at that. They're really nice. Really, really nice. I'm going to look into like where um, you can get them in the U.S. Because I, I highly recommend. I use these um, in my Hanamiel sketchbook. They, they weren't, they were just acted more like traditional markers in that sketchbook. Couldn't get a lot of flow in that sketchbook. But really lovely. Let me get more paper. I want to play around with those some more. Hold the phone. As she says, hold the phone. You have a whole set. Yeah, they're really cool. And that's the thing. I, I gave you that caveat, like, 
there's stuff here that you're probably like, how did you not know about those? Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes you got to go to another country to realize there's cool art supplies in your own country. I, I don't know. Hello, Bira. Hello, hello. Friends, if you're just popping in and you're watching on replay, I'm so glad you're here. Um, this was originally live, but we're, we're so glad you're here. So please say hello. Please head into comments. Let us know your team replay. And let's just see what we can do with these. Yeah, so in my Hanamiel, I would kind of use them like just an alcohol marker. I didn't, I wasn't relying on them to kind of uh, spread much, if that makes sense. And now that I have them on, huh, now this one didn't spread as much. See, yeah, this brush is gonna drive me nutty. Look at that. Just please no, please don't make me reshape a brush or work additional strokes into my workflow. <laughs> Y'all are probably like, I would take that brush. Please stop complaining about the beautiful fancy brush, Christy. <laughs> I am a synthetic gal through and through, and I don't apologize for it. Anywho, yeah, these are a blast on the right paper. Mm -hmm. And just a different feel from like your zigs, you know, just a, a really different feel, a little more control, I guess is what I would say. Um, and they do work nicely into the wet paper. They last about as long as the zigs would on damp or wet paper. Actually, they're lasting a little bit longer than a zig traditionally would. Interesting. So I'd love to get my, my hands on a full set of these. Um, I mean, look at the, you can get a nice undulation of, of line quality with these. Look at that. No idea what kind of flower I'm painting. You know, something I noticed in Europe, and especially in, in uh, Holland, Netherlands, uh, yeah, I don't actually know what, is Holland just like a name for like a particular region of the Netherlands? I think it is. Anywho, I noticed some strange things blooming at strange times when you would compare it to the U.S. So there was just a whole mess of interesting things popping. Like there was this stuff, like we went to, um, uh, oh, I'm not gonna remember the name. It's the old windmills, not, not Sean Zons or whatever that like park where they preserved a bunch of windmills. Um, Kitsch, Kitsch, uh, I can't remember the name. Please help me if someone here knows what the heck I'm saying. Anywho, we went there and there was a whole bunch of stuff that looked like some type of, of uh, Queen Anne's lace blooming. And I was like, wow, what Queen Anne's lace in the US blooms in August. And I, my surprise is because, you know, it was still winter there. It felt very wintry there still. It was cold most of our time there. Yeah, I need to make this so it's kind of facing. I don't know which way this is facing, but really lovely watercolor markers in these 60, 68s, I think is what they're called. Um, I need to do more research. I don't even know if they market them as watercolor markers. Um, but yeah, big, big, big new fan. Woohoo! Love it. Y'all, this desk is a hot, hot, holy mess, but it's okay. All right. I want to take a moment and talk about, if you were here for my packing, I want to talk about this situation. Y'all, I barely used half of these brushes. And I know some of you are like, I told you so. You did. Um, this, this worked reasonably well, but y'all, it's time. It's time for a travel brush holder, 100%. But more importantly, here's the thing. What I learned on this trip, and I, I'm going to speak to something here, and that's when I'm going to talk about this spray bottle and its significance to my trip. This, I think this is important. We got to talk about it. I had me a full-blown Christy Rice revelation, and it was a good one, mind you. It was a good one. I'm down with it. Okay. And then we have a few more Van Beek 
that was all the Beak supplies I want to show you. But y'all, something, I had a little like aha moment. All right. I had a little aha moment. And it's good. It's fine. This thing. You know I love my collapsible painter's pot. But I fairly, very quickly realized for the type of traveling I was doing. When I go to Utah, friends, this is my best friend. Let me tell you about my best friend. Okay? I'm in a good mood. I'm singing. Like, this is my best friend. If you can name where, like, what that song is from, you win a prize. Okay? I'm dead serious. Um, You can... Bet your butt if I'm going to be on a long haul, if I'm painting on a hike, uh, you know, I'm going to be sitting there for at least an hour, maybe longer. Um, I'm going to be taking this. I'm going to be taking this. I can't. And, and like, you're probably like, are you about to speak ill of your own product? I'm not. I'm, I'm speaking reality. This was too big for city sketching. This was too big for city sketching. <laughs> Eddie's father who said, Wait, yes, I totally aged myself. Um, Sue, was Sue first? Could somebody look? Was Sue first to mention Eddie's father? Oh, thank you, Sally, for buying the stamps. Thank you, thank you. Anywho, somebody confirmed that um, Sue Kivley was the first to say Eddie's father. That'd be great. Okay, so this was too big for city sketching. When I was just, you know, pulling out, and this is what I was doing most. I was pulling out my Art for Joy Sake palette um, or my Van Gogh. I was kind of swapping between the two. And in that, I was I had my, my travel brush um, prototypes that I'm working on. This is what I was carrying around most trying to open this it's like oh my gosh what is happening like glued shut or something okay there we go so this is what I took I had these two little bad boys in here which were the number six and then the cat's tongue let me tell you this cat's tongue was my bff on this trip it I used it all the time this one I had those two in my palette in the middle they fit beautifully. And then I very quickly, obviously, realized I wanted a liner and my triple zero. So I uh, ended up buying a set of Caran d'Ache pan gouache. Sadly, I was not able to bring the tin home. I had to pop these all out of the tin because um, I ran out of space. <laughs> so I left the tin in Holland. Maybe somebody else got to use it. But um, during the trip, I was using the tin because I was storing these two brushes. And then I was I was using this quite a bit. I had this in my bag for about a week of the trip. I really, really enjoyed these gouache. This is Caran d'Ache gouache. I got this in um, <clears throat> Stein on Rhein, little town with the painted walls. They had a cute little shop there. It's in my stories. They had a really fun selection of stuff. Anywho, so I used four brushes, y'all, four, okay? Um, but again, city sketching, I would pop out my palette, my little Hanna Mule sketchbook, uh, and my, my two to four brushes, and then I'd pull this out, and it was so much because, number one, I'm at a restaurant most likely, or, you know, I'm at, it was just so much even just water to fill it, right? So I have decided it's already in development. I've only been home, what, three days? Uh, we're going to have a city collapsible painter's pot. It's going to be like half the size, maybe a little smaller than this. It's still going to be two wells. It's still going to be collapsible, but it's only going to be about three and a half inches in diameter. It will fit in like a car cup holder. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about it. So you'll have two size options. And then, of course... This is still great. This is for like, it, it's going to be like your city sketcher and your country sketcher. Are you going big country? Or are you going sleek city? I'm so excited. So what I ended up using is my spray bottle. I would spray down my palette and then I would untwist. And I was not super happy about it because I didn't 
this got dirty really quick, but I had to make fast and loose judgment on what to do. And so this bad boy went back in my suitcase. Um, but again, I was painting in the middle of anywhere. Um, I was mostly restaurants when we would have our meals. My husband would kind of, or my mom would take care of the kids and I'd get to sketch a little or on a bench or on whatever. It was, yeah, you know, I went with my flow. But anyway, that was one of my revelations. Too many brushes also. Really love these Caran d'Ache pan gouache. And let me tell you why. And I'm going to show you a little bit here as to why. Um, I'll explain as I, as I unpack what I need to, to actually show you. So I adore gouache, but I don't like letting my gouache cure because... I like that feel of the wet, the thickness. I like, I like that. Now with traveling though, that really doesn't work. So what I love about this pan gouache compared to like other gouaches that I have that when cured, these re-wet extremely quickly and become, they give you a syrupy consistency quite fast. So I kind of get that that, you know, jelly gouache feel or that right out of the tube gouache feel pretty quickly and easily. Now, it's not the same as right out of the tube, of course. But if you wet these and let these hang out, you're going to get a really nice soft gouache to work with. So I will be traveling with these forever and ever. Amen. I am a huge fan and I hope they make more colors. So Karen Dash, sponsor me. Thanks. Okay. Really nice. Like, look at how you can really loosen up that top layer and paint thickly. All right. So, so nice. Such, that was probably, believe it or not, which is strange because it's not like it was a unique product that I could only get overseas, but um, one of my favorite finds. Yeah. Anybody else use them? Yeah. You're having a hard time finding me on Patreon. Linda, look at that is the link in my description. Um, if you're watching on TV, I think it can be hard to see the description box, but if you're on a phone, but um, can someone post the link to my Patreon, please? I think it's like H you might have to do the HTTPS colon slash slash uh, www.patreon.com slash Christy Rice. Um, can someone post that? I would be so appreciative. Nicole, maybe, um, cause you're one of my patrons, please, please. Okay. Um, Michelle, do you want a travel spray bottle or a normal? I have right now in my Amazon, if you just search Christy Rice Amazon page, um, I, I have like a miscellaneous list and you're going to see my continuous spray bottle there full size for in studio. And then I am going to go ahead and post these as well. These were fantastic for travel spray bottles. All right. Tammy, Tammy K is here, friends. I just noticed. I'm so sorry. I'm scrolling back to answer some questions. Yes. Sue was first. Awesome. Okay. Sue, Sue. I need you to email me, hello at christyrice.com, attention Kristen, and um, you know what, you go ahead and pick what you'd like. You can get the new stamp set for swatching, you could get one of our brush sets or my palette. You let her know that you won and your choice is a, a swatching stamps, a palette, or one of the six paintbrush brush sets. You let her know what you'd like, all right, and we'll get that out to you. Okay, cool. Okay, so lesson learned, don't take as many brushes. Or actually, really, and this is really where I was heading. Lesson learned, Christy, get those travel brushes into production yesterday. So I do have a new set of travel brushes that's going into production. Uh, right now it's a set of three. I was on the fence about adding a fourth. <laughs> I am no longer on the fence. <laughs> I may add a fifth because you know what? This girl travels a lot. And if you travel a lot or you want to make sure you have your, hat, your your magic cup set up and ready to rumble in your car and so on and so forth, these travel brushes are indispensable. They just, I can't say enough good about them. Now, would I want to use a travel brush all the time if I was like, if I was country painting? No, I would want my full size brushes. So anywho, 
this was a cool workaround to hold brushes, but we're gonna make something better here right quick. Okay. I have a really special little collection of supplies that I'm kind of, I'm saving until the end. And this, let me see where we're at. I'm gonna show you a couple of the books that I picked up in the museums. All right. Oh wait, let's go back to Van Beek. I picked up two of these Hanna Mule zigzag um, journals. I got a really small one that my daughter ended up stealing and she loves it. So whatever. I didn't end up using this one, but I will because it's fun. Hanna Mule is not my favorite paper. I'm not going to lie, but I love the zigzag quality. Pick this up. Um, Claire Fontaine, which I think I got another Claire Fontaine. Hold the phone. Mm, no, I was asking about it in another shop. Anyway, this is a brand. I don't know much about it. 100% cotton. Let's rip her open. I loved the reason I got this. The window. I love the little window. Yep. Travel bag. Linda, I am working on the travel bag. This paper's a little thin. It's got me concerned. It said... 25 sheets, 300 GSM. Mm, I don't believe. I don't, I'm not buying that 300 GSM nonsense, but that's okay. It's okay. Just me talking smack. No worries. I'm going to go into the back here and just play around. Um, well, I want to use watercolor. Let's get my Roman schmalls out here. I did take my Romans. I used them quite a bit. Oh, this is the little brush that came with the, the Van Gogh. I actually used this and it wasn't half bad. I probably liked it because it was synthetic and it came to a really nice point. So, you know, way to keep it consistent with the uh, unexpected quality for a good price, Van Gogh. All right. So let's, you know, let's go with the international theme. Pull out the, pull out the uh, Romans the heck is here oh okay we gotta talk about that and let's this is claire fontaine 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 i don't know and just gonna do a little wet juicy wet on dry here to see how this paper this is interesting. I am starting to develop a little bit of an affinity for these less rough watercolor papers. I mentioned the um, the Van Beek paper that I picked up. And I usually like me a really solid, rough uh, cold press. But the Van Beek um, was a little bit of a, a, a surprise. And I enjoyed it. It had a more of a velvety finish, which this one does too. I wonder if this is some type of European like tradition or tendency. I don't know. This is lovely. This is handling things beautifully. I'm still getting, uh, let's see if I could do big washes. Sorry guys. I keep hitting my cord here and it's making everything shake. Oh, let's see. Big wash, big wash, big wash. Mm -hmm. Usually with these um, less textural papers, you know, the more towards hot press that you get, the less, you know, um, friendly the paper is to juicy washes. I'm not seeing that here at all. Nice. So lovely. I'm excited to use this. Uh, I'm going to reserve this for uh, my next trip. I'm probably um, going to use it. Um, I might save this for Spain. Uh, and speaking of Spain, I really didn't do that. That was a really obvious transition, but I didn't plan it. My retreat to Spain has been guaranteed, which means we are going. Um, right now, I think we have 10 folks signed up. Um, there is still room for five more, but we are going. We don't, we don't, there was, they, um, I met my minimum, I guess. 
And so we are going to the south of Spain. If you want more information about that, I do have that in the description below. If it's not there right now, I will get it there. But um, we are going to be having a blast there in the south of Spain. Um, one of the ways, one of the things I'm going to be teaching are these hybrid sketches, which are so life-giving. Here's my one from Bruges. I started the Delft one. They are so life-giving um, when you're traveling because you feel like you've accomplished a lot. And it's very satisfying. Um, this was just a different take on a, a hybrid sketch, but it's basically where you're juxtaposing seemingly disparate images into one scene, and they're just so fun. So I'm going to be teaching that in the South of Spain. I'm going to be teaching so much. If you're interested, go check it out. Only five spots left. Uh, friends, I have the Sennelier paper. I did pick this up at Van Beek as well. How's everybody doing? Um, Virginia, the sketchbook was Claire Fontaine, um, 300 GSM. And the, the texture was definitely like a hybrid cold press, hot press. Sorry, I don't know why it switched views. I'm looking for my, you cannot believe the mess that is my desk right now, but I am looking for my mouse. <laughs> I lost my mouse in all this mess. Oh my gosh. I don't know where it went. And I really want to change. Oh, there. Okay. We went back to full view. Thank you, Nicole. Delft is your hometown. Oh, friend, I had such a blast in Delft. I met a new friend in Delft. I got to meet with e Izzy Watercolors. And I know her name is actually pronounced EC, but she said she just goes with Izzy now because that's what everybody calls her. So, and I was like, well, do you want me to call you Izzy or EC? And she's like, no, go with Izzy. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I remember that because that's my son's nickname. I got the Sennelier watercolor paper, which I think I actually already had here. Oh, I just dropped a bunch of stuff. Oh, good Lord. Um, but let's do a little something, something on here. Fine. It says grain fin, fin, fine, fin. It's French. Um, fe, it's probably fe. Um, anywho, it's not, maybe that doesn't mean fine. I don't know. But we're gonna, what the heck is that? We're gonna paint on it. This is also a, a more moderately textured cold press. Ooh, but it, that's, that's pretty. I mean, it's an LEA, y you know, can't go wrong. Ooh, le look at these stabilos, look at this. Look how they're exploding in that quash. Woo! Now this looks like a disease, but um, y'all, I am so ready to create a Christy mop brush. I'm so ready for it. You've been asking for years. It's time. It is time. I really, these are the Stabilo 68s. They're, as far as I'm concerned, they're watercolor markers, and they are funzo. Anywho, that's the Sennelier watercolor paper. Good times, good times. All right. I think, is that all for Van Beek? Good night. It's got to be. All right. This is all um, that. Okay. Sorry, organizing in my brain. This is that, that is this. Oh wait, this is easy. I got, I'm organizing. I'm organizing. All right, I'm gonna put all the easy stuff in here. Izzy, I keep wanting to call her by her actual name, but my brain won't let me. All right, we're gonna interlude here into some of the art books that I picked up. Super exciting or not, depends on how you feel about art books. I picked up the Van Gogh Life According to Vincent, just quotes. I love me a quote book. I love me a quote book. 
Oh, and there's some really cool sepia sketches in here. So, and that's categorized. So who knows? I, I thought I might do a video based on this. Um, when and where can I buy this watching stamps? Okay, Bluey Grace. So a couple of ways in the description here, and thank you, Jennifer, for helping me along. But in the description section here, you're going to see Christie's Art Supplies. You just want to go to that link. It's going to take you to a landing page. You're going to be able to find it there if you want a direct link. If you want to help a girl out, take a few extra moments. I would love it if you would search um, watercolor paint set, three words, watercolor paint set on Amazon. And I believe we're on the first page right now. Uh, so that would be super awesome if you want to help me out that way. Uh, Misty, go to my Instagram. I don't think I have the link here. I may look in the description section first. I may have a link to my, uh, to my Uptrek um spain trip you could go to uptrek.com U U P T R E T R E K U P T R E K, um or just go to instagram the link in my bio takes you right to the registration page there's a ton of info there um yes linda uh let me see if i can get the link to the spain trip oh i lost my mouse i lost my mouse dang it dang it to heck Oh, I found my mouse. All right. I think I might be able to get this for you, friends. Hold tight. All right. All right. I'm going to go to Instagram. And then we need to talk about these rings, can we? I know this isn't art supplies, but this is artist stuff. And we got to talk about these rings. Christy, the painter. Sorry, friends. I'm literally going to my own Instagram page to get you the link. I hope it doesn't start playing something loud and obnoxious. I'm going to take a drink break while we're at it. Here's the link. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been asking y'all to share links, and I don't actually know if you can share links if you're not me. All right. Fan color paints from Karen Dash. Fan color. I, I just know that they're gouache pans. I forget like what their name was. I threw out the packaging. All right, there's the link, friends. Up Trek. There she is. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, you were able to post the link. That's awesome sauce. And then uh yeah. So Nicole posted that link. I think we're I think we're golden. Hello, Jackie. Welcome back. The tone paper is not Claire Fontaine. No, the um the tone paper was Hanamule. Hanamule um sketchbook. Not not 100 percent cotton. And honestly, I don't even know if there was any cotton in that stuff, but it was very smooth, um, very resistant to any kind of fun watercolor exploding stuff but i still had fun in it i used it the whole time um okay cool all right so there's the book life according to vincent really really stoked to get into that um all right y'all we need to talk about this exhibit I, this was at the Van Gogh Museum, and they always seem to have an exhibit that's like a modern uh, painter, a contemporary painter, and they chose Matthew Wong, and I just fell in love with this exhibit. I went in there as an afterthought. I really focused on the, the traditional permanent exhibit. But I went in, and y'all know I'm not an art history person. I get bored easily in museums, and I no longer try to hide that fact. Uh, but uh, Matthew Wong struck a chord in me, and he was heavily inspired by Van Gogh and other artists. And he was a contemporary to the point that, you know, artists that are still alive, sadly, we've lost Matthew Wong um, too, too soon. But when he was at the height of his painting fervor, he was speaking with people online in Facebook groups, in DMs. And so 
um, this exhibit was kind of informed by these conversations, which I love that that kind of throwback, you know, so many uh, artists in in the 1800s, 1900s, we have books filled with their letters to other artists. And that's how we've discovered um, how we've kind of discovered about these artists lives of history. But here we are, we have an artist that was, you know, painting in the 2000s, who's doing the same thing, just to, with a slightly different medium. And we still are learning about this contemporary artist in the very same way. So I just thoroughly enjoyed, I would highly recommend looking up Matthew Wong, learning a bit more about him. Um, in, you know, trigger warning, um, Matthew did on the live himself. Uh, a lot of mental health issues and uh, this painting as a last resort does kind of foreshadow the mood of this exhibit. But uh, so if that's not something you're ready to kind of experience, then avoid this. But uh, I, I really enjoyed it. There is a lot of joy here. So I, I've been reading that and I will continue to get into that book as the days and weeks go on here. Um, and then I just picked up the exhibition catalog for Van Gogh because I'm a book junkie and I love them. And I wanna do some studies um, based on some of his early pieces in his line work and his how he laid color on paper, um, like stuff like this I find fascinating. Um, so I picked this one up. And oh, yeah, Kinderjik, and I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that's how an American pronounces. Kinderjik is where we were, where I saw the Queen Anne's lace. Um, somebody tell me how to pronounce it properly. Oh, look at that, Van Gogh. This is Van Gogh. I love discovering um, the early styles or the experimental styles of artists that I didn't know about. For example, when we were at, um, in Delft at the Royal Delft Museum, I saw the the Picasso ceramic exhibit for the love and it was it was such a, a revelation. I don't even know where that book went. I, I bought a book. Anywho, okay. We'll get back to art supplies really quick. This is from Interlaken in Switzerland. Um, this is a store that my husband and I went into um, on our first trip to the Netherlands, Albert Schild. Um, and it is just, an, it has a, le this, the legacy of the store is so sweet and so lovely. His great grandson now runs the store. So Albert's great grandson now runs this store. And I really want to save this sticker, but I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe. Um, no, it's not. But I have another one wrapped like it. So hopefully. I picked this up, it's a children's book. It's in German, um, but I just adore, I think it's in German or is it Dutch? No, I think it's German. I love the illustration style. I'm obsessed and I'm gonna translate it and read it to my daughter. Cause let me tell you, Google Translate, let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> um, you know, Google Translate was just awesome for us, but, um, yeah, so this, look at these illustrations. Yeah, German, yeah, der, der. Um, so beautiful. Hans Fischer, is that the artist? But look at the, look at the, like the color blocking and just that whimsical like pen, I'm assuming fountain pen. Oh, look at the kitty cat wearing shoes. I mean, just, yeah, I do mean Kinder Jacqueline. How do I pronounce it? She's like, you couldn't tell from my pronunciation. Yeah, we were there and we were, you know, we were actually there years ago in 2019. And it is so different now. It's so built up. There's like a museum and a coffee shop. Like when we were there, there was like nothing and nobody was there. And this time there was like buses and it was a very different experience. But what are you going to do? Um, yeah. Oh, because it's a dyke. Kinder dyke because it's a dike. Yes, you're walking amidst water. Why didn't um, I get that? Yeah, I don't know. Anywho, I picked up this book um, and 
the gentleman was telling me it's just a beloved book um, in Europe. And, and I was like, well, I can see why. I mean, look at this. Look at this rooster. Hi, mama. You're so pretty. So it just, I want to study this in terms of illustration, quick illustrations. I really, really enjoyed getting back into um, architecture and finding my, my comfort with it, with the architecture stuff. Um, really enjoyed it. And I was very kind of shaky in the beginning of the trip, but then, you know, found my hand with it as the trip went on. Um, and so I, I want to continue to push that in myself. So, and you can even see, like, I started with flowers and I start, you know, and I, and then as it evolves, I'm like going into full blown animals and architecture and windmills. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to get more comfortable with animals and I want to find my, find my flow. So this book is for that. I also want to read it to my daughter somehow. I know, right? Okay. All right, let's see here. So I want to show you, this was the art store. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it. It's the one that I went to the old store in Bruges and was not met with a very lovely um, welcome. Can't remember the name of the store now. What's wrong with me? If somebody remembers, please tell me. But then I went to the new store who was under completely different ownership, even though they had the same name. A little bit of steamy family drama was revealed in that experience. Uh, and I picked up some goodies. Let me show you quick. All right. So Copic had fine liner sets in different colors. Now, sepia, I get it. Like, sepia wasn't terribly, like, earth scattering um and then what else is in here okay. but i was really excited to pick up a fine liner set in pink so i could sketch city sketch in pink and then i got it like a, a pewter like a gray ish so that was a really fun find the pink i had never experienced that before I picked up these. Now, I'm a little bummed that they're all metallic. Um, Schneider um, painted 0.4 millimeter pen. You can barely see the point on these. But they have this glorious, like, smooth feel to them. They don't skip. They're just super consistent. And they just roll over even watercolor paper like effortlessly. So I picked up all the colors they had of those. They're metallic, but they don't even look that metallic-y on the paper. And I'm going to see if Schneider has like a set that's not metallic. But I grabbed those. Lovely. Um, this is a watercolor sketch album. The brand is Smith Art. Smith Art, I believe. Yep. Looks like they're on Instagram. Um, lay flat again a hybrid between cold press and hot press a little um it almost gosh it doesn't have a watercolor paper feel at all which is concerning but and then i got these fintech premiums they had a whole display of fintechs i never saw so many fintechs in my life and I don't have any FinTech, so I was like, you know what? It is time. Hmm. Interesting. I was expecting more saturation out of that. Of course, I want to try out their fluorescence. So not all FinTechs are shimmery, as we can see. And these are definitely not saturated. Am I missing something? Oh, and that stains like a mother. I don't know about this paper. Or maybe it's the Fintex. Hold on. Maybe it's the brush. This paper may not want as much water as I'm giving it. It is pilling. So let's see here. 
this palette is dirty, so my pans are dirty. Yeah, it's pilling. I don't, maybe I can't use the back. Oh yeah, looks like I can't use the back. Hold on. You know, you win some, you lose some. All right, that's definitely better. Can't use the back. That that's that's definite. Okay, this is like this is this is making more sense. Interesting. The fintech is like granulating. Hmm. Well, tell me about fintech. Um, I don't know if the brush is only available in Europe. I'll try to get a link to it. Um, she just mentioned it was like, she was surprised that I knew a Skoda. And I'm like, really? Um, I, I didn't say that to her, but I was surprised. So she was the woman that was, she was so lovely. She was selling me out the yin yang. Um, but she was surprised I knew a Skoda. It's still staining over here on this side and it's warping a lot. Okay, not not the grandest paper, but you know, I'll use it. But the fintechs are very much getting my peaking my curiosity. <clears throat> uh, let me I'm trying to get up into some questions here. The pronunciation of the I J in D-I-J-K isn't in the English language. Yeah, it just doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Oh, no, you're late to the party. It's okay, Virginia. Thank you, Linda. Judith, swimming. I want to swim. Okay. Lean, I see a bunch of questions. De, De Bonnier, Lucas Creative, Ava, Neverland, Kimar. What would be if you could choose your favorite mass produced paint? There you go, Lean. Yeah, Jackson, sell, Jackson sells a Skoda. Um, my favorite, like, like my favorite um, legacy brand, you mean, Virginia? Okay. And I did get Fintech because I feel like Fintech, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't they known for their their shimmery stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These feel they're hard to get get going. They're hard to like juice up. Um having not known anything about them, you know, I have no opinion on that. But once they do there's a lot going on there. Anyhow, I wanted to check out the gold. So that's what I got. The Fintechs. Not, not sure how I feel about those yet. Okay. Oh, my favorite art supply discovery on the trip. Ah, ha, ha. How you rushed me. No, I'm kidding. Um, so there's that sketchbook. I also got this Lana. Um, mold made cold press. Um, I got these create a color, um, water soluble graphite. Now this branding looks familiar to me, but I don't have it. Does any talk to me about create a color? Where's it from? Because I, ooh, I was able to test this out in the store and it felt different than like the, who has, who else has the, um, what's the name of the brand that has the water soluble graphite? I forgot. Okay. Uh, aqua graph, create, create a color aqua graph blue. And then 
it's going to do this. So this is the closest thing to, um, you all know that I love those copying pencils that I uh, sold in my shop for a while, those vintage Liras. And this is the darndest closest thing because they come out looking like graphite, right? So you can sketch with them, but then you hit them up and they release a color. And these release really nice. Like I actually wish that they would make a stinking watercolor pencil that would release color so thoroughly and smoothly. Yeah, Derwent, I think a lot of them do actually. The one, the thing that made me interested here that I don't remember from the other brands that I've tried, the, the water soluble graphite is the, the white. And I think they called it like a blender or something. Um, I'm trying to find it where I saw it. I don't remember, but I don't quite remember what I saw and where I saw it, but the white intrigued me because it was described as like a blender, but I don't really see what that was that intrigued me. I don't know. What does it say here? Five colored graphites. Blue, da, 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 da. Oh, a brightening. The aquagraph white is a brightening pencil. That's curious. <clears throat> yeah, uh, pulling graphite through paint puddles. Well, let's see, because I've got some puddle here. It pulls it. It definitely pulls the color through. Yeah, yeah, it works. She works. His works. They're awesome. The brightening pencil. Yeah, see, and I was going to say, like, you know, full disclosure, friends, some of the stuff that I discovered all the way in Europe may be available here, and I don't even know it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm very curious about the brightening and digging into that more. Okay. Uh, so at this store in Bruges, where I had a redeeming experience after my original experience at the old store. Does anybody remember what the name of the store was that was watching me consistently? Uh, I got some more blocks. Blocks are single pigment. Um, they're made, I believe it's a Dutch brand. Uh, or a Belgian brand. Maybe it's a Belgian brand. But she's very happy about it. I think it's a Belgian brand, actually, now that I'm thinking. So picked up a couple because all I have is a, a split primary mixing set. So I wanted a little bit more. I grabbed this. I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna leave the sticker on it. I forget. No, not water soluble. So just graphite in a thicker hold. Then I got these brush sign pen artist, ultra fine, which, and they're made in Japan. It's not Kiritake though. Pentel, okay, Pentel. Look at how fine this point is. Look at how fine that is. Insane. I, and it's a longer uh, bristle. It's definitely a brush tip and it's a longer bristle from here to here, which is going to give you, it really feels like my liner brush, my Remember Joy brush, but with the control of a pen format. Um, and on watercolor paper, you know, you're going to get some of that dry brush, but I love these. So I got black, pink, brown. I thought I got something else, but maybe not. But I love, love, love these. I thought I got a green. <clears throat> okay. I think that was about it for that little shop. These over here. I had so much fun. I did some filming in there. I'm going to be working on a video. Um, where I share more of what I filmed and create some, you know, art, specific art. Yes, from Spain is Escoda, yeah. Yes, there we go. 
blocks made in the Netherlands by Royal Talons. There it is. Okay. So I knew she told me something um, about where it was made and that it was nearby ish. Okay. So I've been waiting to show you this next little section. So I met with, oh, I met with Izzy Watercolors and she brought me a little care package and it was the most darling thing. And I did unbox a lot of it on, on stories. Well, no, I actually didn't. I showed some of it on stories. But she brought me her new fresh citrus collection. These two colors granulate. She's known for her granulating colors. Her mother made me this um, brush cloth. Like, can you even? Like, so precious. And then, um, so just like I was in tears. She brought me this from her friend, her ceramicist friend. So this is my one of my favorites of things that I got here on my trip. This is by uh, Caitlin Bongers, and I was paint. I was actually painting with um, the EC watercolors. Um, let's reactivate these. And um, Caitlin, now I called this a leaf. She said it was a moon. I'm calling it a leaf moon. So everybody's right, but I just, I love it either way. Either way, whatever we call it, I love it. All right, so put a little bit of those on there. Now, I don't have a lot of paint on there, so. Um, she brought me her brush soap, which I actually tossed a few half pans in here. But she gifted me her brush soap, which, OMG, it smells like patchouli mm, and other things. So, psyched about that. And then these were the colors that I had on here. And she gave me a little tip. She said, wet your granulating colors in the pan and then get some on a palette and get more water into them. And she was right, y'all. She was right. Um, and it really stoked the granulating fires to do that. That's that one. Yep. Look at her cute pans. She prints her own pans. This one's sparkly red. Look at that. Am I cute? And let's get some of that on here. Let them color bump. All right. And then... You know, with granulating colors, you wanna you wanna nudge them, you wanna bully them with lots of water. This is one time that you should somewhat overwork your watercolors. So I believe these are three of her best sellers. You need to go check out Izzy Watercolors. It's spelled I S S Y, like you see here. Check her out on Instagram. She is a lovely human being. I spent like two hours with her. And we had a blast and I will be using um, the footage that we filmed together is going to be part of my granulating video, of course. This was another palette from her friend Caitlin with a collaboration that Caitlin and Izzy did together. So sweet. Uh, I told you, Izzy's uh, little goodie bag was anything but little. She gifted me with some bamboo papers and a Fabriano. Um... I haven't even showed you like one of the best things that she gifted me with. Hold the phone. I'm trying to keep it organized, but whether or not that's actually working. Here's another soap, another brush soap that she gifted me with. Yes, supervision. Any granulating paint is going to just be just really going to benefit from that kind of technique. Hey, Maida. You use create a color, not the color graphite. Yeah, graph tint. Yeah, okay, graph tint. That's what I was thinking of. And then more of her paints. And she does a signature black half pan, which I think is darling. Let's go ahead. I haven't tried this one yet. This one is called Hi Lady, like H I G H. Let's get it in here. It's like a purpley. Let's get it on the paper. And then. Get some off the palette and just, and you can start to see the gran granulating happening here. Beautiful. All right. So that was, oh wait, there's, 
at least one more thing. Hold on. I, when she gave me this, I gasped. I mean, cause here's the thing. I kind of knew she was going to gift me with some paint because we had kind of talked about it. But this next thing, I had no idea. Sorry, I have a brush in my mouth. Sorry, sorry. All right, I need to be careful with this. That needs to go there. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, so you know, she she sticks it to me with my mom made you a handmade brush cloth. Then she's like, here's a handmade journal that I made you um, from vintage velvet floral patterned fabric. I about lost my dag on mind. I mean, look how, oh, and stickers. Certified art supply inspector. Weekends are for painting. <laughs> anyway, look at this. She made this for me. Look at this. Right? Virginia, I was wondering the same thing. I didn't know if Izzy was on um, YouTube, but... Uh, so anywho, this, I used this, uh, I think she told me, is this Fabriano, I think. And those three colors that I just did here are here on a better paper. And look at what they did. Look at that. So please go find Izzy uh, after the live. I will get all her info below. So you have it. I want a little bird. Little bird. All right. And you're going to be seeing more from her. And honestly, her and I and Caitlin are working on a little collab for the holiday gifting season. Just saying. I'm not going to say any more than that. Because we are in early, early days. But where there's a will, there is indeed a way. Okay. All right. Uh, my other most favorite thing. And this was my last day. This was cooking off day. Kukanoff is not fully my jam, just going to say. But I did spend a lot of time there and had a perfectly good time. But then I found out from Izzy that morning. She's like, hey, BT Dubs. She didn't say BT Dubs, but um, she's like, did you know there's a paint mill that is, um, you know, run by wind still in. Oh, and it's in a windmill and it's like 18 miles from where you're at right now. I was like, um, no, I did not. Did you think to tell me maybe a little bit sooner? No, I'm kidding. But um, I hightailed it there, and it was quite the scene because if you know anything about Kukanoff this time of year, they're only open two months out of the year, friends. And uh, it's like Disney. It's like Disney for tulips. They get about fifty to 60,000 visitors um, sometimes a day um, in, in their really deep season, which I'm pretty sure I was there in the deep season because it was madness. So anywho, I get to this place with about 10 minutes to spare. They close at 4.30 in the afternoon. You can see the whole story. They close at 4.30 in the afternoon and I get there. I'm out of breath because I'm like running. And so this is in a place called uh, Shanz Zanz and I'm butchering that, torturing that pronunciation. I'm sure. And it's um, it's kind of a, a preservation park, if you will, where there's, I think, 12 windmills that have been uh, lovingly preserved. And it's got cute gift shops and cheese making. And it's, it's kind of like an open air museum. Okay. Um, so I run into the first windmill and I'm out of breath because, you know, mama don't run. And I'm like, I run up to the counter and I'm like, Hi, you know, in the Christy excited way. Um, and I, uh, and they're like looking at me like, you okay, honey? Uh, and I'm like, Decat, I'm looking for Decat. And they laughed and they're like, and they gave me directions. Well, Decat was like 10 miles away. Uh, not really, but it, it was like a half a mile. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am not going to get into this museum. So I run and I get in and I tour the museum and I'm not going to share too much more because it's going to be in a video. But anywho, they sell natural pigments. The natural pigments are the ones that they actually still grind there. So I picked up this set. Um, the raw umber, um, Italians, uh, yellow ochre light. Uh, let's see, Earth of Vincenza, 
um, greenish umber. So, you know, your earthy stuff, right? Tile red, which I actually think is made from the tiles, the roof tiles. And uh, burnt sienna. And I just love this whole scene. And this I could get in the normal gift shop, which I thought was interesting because I'm like, that's not something most people are going to buy. But then I had heard that, that there was this like other secret gift shop. And um, I had read that it was also by appointment. And I'm like, okay. So by the time I got done with the tour, I was like, do you think I could get into the secret gift shop? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And so they're, they told me, they came back like 30 seconds later and said it was closed. And I didn't do anything. I didn't like throw a tantrum or anything. I promise you. And they were like, well, where are you from? You can order online. I'm like, the U.S. And they're like, oh, and they don't ship to the U.S. And anyway, I did get this magenta, which is not ground there, but I just thought it was cute. And so they took me into the shop, y'all. They took me into the shop. So picked up a bunch of stuff there. I'm not going to share much more because it's going to be a whole video. And of course, I had to get the cute. Yeah, I really think I'm saying it. Zons. Maybe I said that right, but Sabans or Saban, I don't know. That's the name of the outdoor open air museum. Okay, so I picked up a little book that was in English, but I'd never seen the book, so I got it. And she was telling me it's the best book on dyes and, and pigments, and but it's not, they don't actually translate it to Dutch, and she's sad about that. And then this, these are my, another one of my favorites. Uh, I picked up two pigments. I picked up this one. See, look, look at this. 100% made by wind with passion. Like, come on. Um, green Earth Italian. Pick that up. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. And this one thoroughly grossed out my mother because she doesn't like bugs. Uh, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed freaking her out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, mom. Love you. Wait, did we just did we establish that that's Izzy? Izzy, is that you? Did we establish that? I think we did. Did we? I kind of saw it, but then it wished Christy. I still wish. I still wish you. We live close. It is you. It is you. Yay. Okay, great. Okay, so. Okay, freaking my mom out. So I'm not going to do the accent justice because the one thing that I, um, that is just feels different about like Dutch souls in general is they're just a smidge more, and I'm generalizing, Izzy, I'm sorry, and you can totally call me out here, but I'm generalizing, they're just a little more austere. Like actually when I met Izzy, I was like, I felt a little more at ease because um, other places in the Netherlands, I felt like I was constantly maybe like breaking a rule of some sort by, by existing. I don't know. It's just a little, but I think it's like a cultural thing. I think they're just a little more straightforward and like no nonsense, but I could be wrong. Izzy, tell me. But so I'm in this little secret shop and she's like, and this, this is the red made from the Laos. And I'm like, did she just say Laos? And yes, yes, she did. She did. So this is lice paint, lice pigment. Ugh. So I'm going to make lice paint. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I know I have others here that are Dutch. So if you feel like I have um, misrepresented you, I'm sorry. But I had a woman tell me, who was Dutch herself. And she said, um, it's, she's like, I don't, she, how did she explain it? Uh, Cause you know, when you're traveling internationally, you're, it's like culture shock. You know what I mean? Okay. It's on Sean's. Okay, great. It's like culture shock because everything's different the way people, obviously language, um, but just the way, uh, you know, meal times, uh, you know, all the things and, and kind of just overall personalities and, it's a cultural thing in the area. It's not you. And so I've had several people tell me that it's like, um, you kind of can easily feel like an outsider in, uh, 
in that area. And so, yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, I always felt like I was doing something wrong, but I found the woman in the shop. She was so delightful and didn't make me feel like I was doing something wrong. And she actually laughed with me because that was the other thing. Like I would crack jokes and nobody would laugh like they do at home. And so when I kind of like lost it and got super goofy about the louse paint, she laughed along with me. So she, um, she put me at ease. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Co co cochineal bugs actually. Okay. Well she called them louse. So <laughs> yes, I have, I bought, I bought the schminka, the, the schminka red. Yeah. So, um, I haven't used it yet. It came right before I left, which is so funny actually. So anyway, I'm going to make my own and it's going to be a fun time. I actually want to mix this one and this one and blend. I don't know. So, um, so friends, but I got to say, if I had to choose like my favorite, like this was my favorite experience buying art supplies, but my time with Izzy, not just because I now know for sure she's here, but seriously, um, I connected with her. We kept saying like, we would be friends. We would be friends if we lived closer. And I mean, we'll be friends. You know what I mean? Like we're chatting a lot and we're going to collaborate and all the things, but like, we would be like, let's grab lunch friends. We had so much fun. Oh, they're used in food. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's terrifying. Um, Izzy says we Dutchies can be very direct and cold. Almost feels rude. <laughs> it's okay. But once I knew that, uh, I felt much, much, much better. Yes, not overly friendly, not like Americans that are just like constant, like pushover people pleasers, but efficient indeed. Yes. Like it was so funny. Our Airbnb um, owner of our last Airbnb, which was in Nor Nordstadt, it was near the ocean. I'm, I'm sure butchering it. And she was like, so you, you showed up so late. What, what were you doing all day? And I proceeded to tell her what I was doing all day. And I got like three quarters of the way through and she's like, oh, you don't need to tell me everything. And I'm like, oh, she, you like, you know, it, it so <laughs> I don't know. Anywho, I love traveling. It's so fun to be jerked out of your comfort zone because that's when the wonderful things happen. It's like metaphor for art and life, you know, pull yourself out of those comfort zones and see what happens. Anyway, favorite experience, the cat. Um, Ver, Verf Molen de Cat. So is Verf Molen windmill? So it's the cat windmill. Is that, am I saying that right? Uh, because this is where, um, I believe paints were made. Van Gogh purchased paints here before, or maybe after the fire. When was Van Gogh alive? Oh my gosh, I'm not a historian, but there was a fire and it was rebuilt and so on and so forth. Um, and, um, Rembrandt. Hello. So that was before. I guess. But again, not a historian. I don't remember memorize facts unless I absolutely have to. And I will be getting the facts straight before I do my video. Don't worry. So you can't make fun of me. Um, I mean, you can, but whatever. Paint mill the cat. Oh, it's paint mill. So Verf Molen is paint mill. So the cat paint mill. I love that. Okay. Oh, it's used in red lipstick. Hello, Thrifty Apprentice. Thank you so much for all your reviews lately. I am so behind watching them, but I am so appreciative. <clears throat> so let me see a um, couple of more things and then we'll wrap it up. I thought this was so lovely. It was a little shop um, in Colmar, France. And it was a linen shop and she had an illustrator create these little sketches of the town and it's just a little zip pouch. Oh, here's the shop, Avenue d'Alsace. D'Alsace, um, so cute. So I love that. And that's artsy. Um, and then my other, my most favorite experience that wasn't necessarily um, art related proper, if you will. But before I, I get into that, let me show you one last cute little thing. I got this from Kukunov. Um, a postcard set and it was all vintage um, uh, postcards from I think 50 to 55. Look at these. So I kind of want to get inspired by these and 
create some of my own scenes kind of with this this style so beautiful so i picked that up at cucanol um but yeah you can see they were from posters cucanol posters isn't that great love that i also did get like a foot and a half long pencil and cucanol very cheesy but i thought it could actually be a cool exercise for loosening up so you know um oh i got these to be lows for my daughter they're kind of like highlighters but kind of like markers but i've really been enjoying using them they're very velvety and they just they move on the page so um the paint mill does not ship internationally they do not um uh i may actually talk to them uh because i got to speak with the owner i got to speak with his son so lovely they were like they were like oh i wish we knew you were coming we would have like shown you so many other things and i'm like oh man i wish i wish you knew i was coming yeah i wish too um they but they were lovely people um so i might reach out to them and see if i could maybe stock some of their stuff um which i think would be cool okay so my favorite experience that was non art related and we're coming to the to the end here so I um, I was in Requier, uh, the the uh, Beauty and the Beast Inspiration Village. It was my favorite little village in all of Europe, hands down, no questions. Favorite favorite village, and there was I wasn't a hundred feet into this village, and I ran into this antique store, and um, oh one more thing from that art shop in bruges i got this paper this mag magnani it's an italian paper magnani not used it before so i'm excited to try that okay so i'm in this little vintage shop and i'm immediately just drawn in i bought a bunch of like you know uh costume jewelry from the 70s and so on oh let's talk about these anyway i picked up this little guy and it's like a wine festival a uh, little brochure or something from the 50s and the illustrations just caught my eye and it's like a z i think it folds out yeah like it folds out like look at this look at this so cute. isn't that cute like oh these are my favorite the ladies in these dresses so again wanted to study this illustration style so the owner and i you know we her husband and i got to talk and like she was so cool she was wearing like she had the funkiest hair and she was wearing like a rock and roll like an old 70s rock and roll t-shirt i just loved her immediately so she's like do you know about hansi and i'm like hansi no but let me tell you what the cover of this book has got me like let me buy it now <clears throat> um no only the tan one lean i've not tried the gray hanamil and I, I, I do know that the E in Hanamiel is supposed to be pronounced, but I just can't. It sounds so strange coming out of my mouth. I know it's like Hanamiel. I, I can't do it. I don't know. Oh, I've been told and I'm pronouncing it wrong. But anyway, Hansi. So Hansi is, was born in, and I believe born in Rick Weir, uh, or at least in the Alsace region. And he just... Um, long story short, he was an illustrator and he, uh, was in the Alsace region when it was, um, I think taken over by the Germans. I think it's the Germans. I'm so bad at history. And he, uh, was just, he loved his country. He loved his, his village and he was quite political, um, and ended up doing some children's books to celebrate the Alsace region. And this is one of his books. And so there is a museum in Colmar. I had been there the day before, so I didn't know. There is a Hansi Museum in Colmar. I didn't get to visit. There's a Hansi Museum in Rickweir, but it looks like it's temporarily closed. Oh, excuse me. And so he's just beloved illustrator. I think some of his stuff I discovered, she told me that his illustrations, his paintings are on the walls, like literally painted on the walls of some of the buildings. And I believe I encountered one of them, uh, but I'm still looking into it if it was just a reproduction by someone else. 
Um, this was the little shop, Honest Plus Chez Mime. Um, that was the little shop, but this book, I mean, she's in, in rough shape, but, oh, so I have been really getting into Hansi, learning more about this, this incredible illustrator. Um, but I am in love with these illustrations. Aren't they gorgeous? Thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> so gorgeous. Uh, yes, people do have difficulty pronouncing Schminka. Um, and I think I'm pronouncing it somewhat correctly, so. <laughs> oh. So I just like this here, the juxtaposition of this black with the little pinky red flowers. And then this like, I don't know what you call this, but this little accent on the dress in aqua. I just the style, the sweetness, but it's still very, um, the contrast is, so I do not speak French, no. <clears throat> I do not speak any language, but English, unfortunately. So anyway, this was my favorite experience by far. I spent like an hour and a half in this shop and just was hanging out with the owners and asking questions and we took our picture together and I had uh, such, such um, kind of Mula, Mula, ah, something like that. Okay. Ah, so I had such, such a wonderful time with them and, and I'm looking around and I think I covered it all. Holy moly. Um, Oof. Yeah, I think I think I got it all, unless it hasn't been unpacked, but I'm pretty sure we got it all. So quite quite a ridiculous haul, friends. Um or maybe more like the mutant gut. Uh uh had a mula. Had a mula. Okay. I'm 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 fascinated by pronunciation, especially with art supplies and art brands. I, I feel like I want to pronounce those more appropriately. Yeah. Ah, so this was fun. This was a great haul. This was a great haul. So friends, please check out Izzy. Um, Izzy, remind me of your Instagram handle. Go ahead and just type it there in the comments. Please check her out. I'm going to go work through right now. Right now, I'm going to go update the description section <clears throat> on this live to see if I can't find you links to like things like this Ultimo Evolution brush from Muscoda and get you Izzy's information. And I've got the blocks information here. So anywho, and I, I want to give shout outs to all of the businesses. So this is going to take me like an hour. Uh, okay, so it's Izzy.watercolors. So it's I-S-S-Y dot watercolors. So please go follow Izzy Watercolors. Please, please, please. Let's look at the back of this. Oh, yeah, the back of this. Isn't that sweet? Um. I don't know what's going to happen to my personal artwork as I, as I kind of digest all of this. I feel like I've been, you know, I've come home, I've been exhausted. I've been, you know, jet lagged. So I've, I've just been kind of chilling out. I've been reading a little bit. I haven't been creating a lot of art. I've been kind of like defragging my brain. <clears throat> you pronounced the E in Schminka correctly. With Hanamula, it ends in that same note. Okay, so an uh, Hanamula, Hanamula. Okay, yes! <laughs> if you could see me, I'm cheering. My arms are in the air. Um, so I am gonna get back into. I was painting and drawing so much in Europe. Um, let me quickly just show you these rings. I'm obsessed. I know it's not an art supply, but friends, this artist deserves recognition. So this is the artist. I'm going to try to carry her stuff in my shop. It's Stoner Gloss. Um, and so these screw off for the love. How cute. And there's a female and a male part. And then you can screw on a new one. Now, I wore all three of these whilst over there. So I'm going to go ahead and I wore all three of these. Now, this one's smaller, but taller. 
Isn't that cute? I, and they, they took a beating because I've hit these hard more than one or two times and they did not break or crack or anything. So I am a huge fan. So, so cool. Yeah, I know. I feel, I think it's, it's my time. I feel, I feel like I'm on the cusp of something, an ever like, uh, um, a landmark point in my personal style. I feel it. I feel it. It's like bubbling up in me. So it's a good thing. You think I'd like this? Go to Versatile more. Okay. Yeah. It does. Pronunciation fascinates me because I'm constantly screwing it up. And I appreciate you getting into detail. And I want to be able to pronounce. Like for me, um, pronunciation is a struggle, even in the English language. But um, it's a goal for me to like tackle the art supply world first and get it right because I want to honor the the countries that these things come from and not like butcher it with my Americanism. So anywho, friends, this has been a blast. Thank you so much. Um, and I know the ring is fantastic, right? Yeah. Um, Anyone stop to watch me paint? That is another thing. Two other things that were really interesting to me. Not, you know, when I paint in the U.S., uh, I have pe just constant people stopping, asking questions, at times distracting me. Um, in Europe, it was completely different. They would look over my shoulder. They were very cautious and um, respectful, um, but they did not stop me or bother me. They would say, oh, that's beautiful, and then just back away. Um, I loved Europe. Yes, I did. I, it was so good to get back. It's been, it was, you know, four years since before that time. So, uh, so that was the one thing that was odd and refreshing. The other thing is my nail art. Y'all, they didn't know what to do with my nails because I, I have since gotten them redone, but I had different art on every nail and it was inspired by each of the countries. And, you know, in the U.S., people look at my nails and they're like, oh my gosh, let me see your nails. And they're grabbing my hands. And over there, I would just get these glances like down, like it was hysterical. It was hysterical. I've not been to Austria. I would get stuck everywhere. You call the Hannah Mule paper the rooster because of their symbol. The rooster paper. <laughs> I thought I would get stuck too, but I haven't. Now this one's taller, so we'll see. I'm going to wear this one for a little bit. All right, friends. This was such a blast. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. So many. Oh my gosh. this The list of folks here has actually grown. So y'all are here. You didn't just stick with me. You stuck to it. Um, such fun. Don't forget to catch me next week where I'm going to go ahead and finish some of this artwork. And if it is after next week, um, the end of this live should give you a, a link to, uh, that next live where I finish the artwork. Cause that's going to be a perfect segue. And so, yeah, I'm so glad. Okay. Bye all. Happy day. Happy painting. Go get it.